boat, and they were, I know a couple of guys involved, it was easy for them to get it. Easy, you know, on a relative basis. So that's my thoughts on clean tech. On, on future, uh, like, I, I like, I like bioengineering. I mean, I think it's a big trend, and, you know, I don't know a lot about it, but I tell you that I think that's an enormous trend. There's a lot of Web 3.0 trends that I know more about that I think are going on, and you can iterate. That's more iteration. That's not a big breakthrough. Right. You, know, you can do that maybe in Brazil. You can do it, you know, in growth countries. There's lots of ways to, to make money from that standpoint. But if you look for big themes, I would say the bioengineering thing. That's a big theme, and we got great schools around here. I'm sure there's some amazing people. I mean, we've done a bunch of startups out of Caltech, as an example. I'm sure there's some amazing people doing things right now. Have you done any biotech? Uh, yeah, we're, oh. we're uh, we're doing a bio device right now. Um, wow. We're, we're uh, in our first fund. We did three. We're three for three, and we're just lucky. We're lucky. I, I mean, I don't know if you could have a doctorate or a PhD and be better at it. It's it's a lot of it's a lot of luck. I mean, you have to get these things into phases, and they cost a lot of money. And you know, if you get them to phase two and it's working, the drug company might come along and right. pick you out. Yeah. Um, do you want to you tell what you think of the trend? Well, uh, yeah. We also don't do clean tech. We just, you know, one of the things that happens in venture funds is people tend to invest in things that they're interested in. And so when clean tech, my partner Bill Gross at Ideal Lab uh, said, I'm going to do a whole bunch of whatever it was, green tech back then. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, I want to do it. Are you interested? And, and I asked my partners. None of us had a real high level of interest in that category. And so as a firm, we chose not to invest. Uh, uh, I, you know, I've liked Bill, I've, I followed it on the periphery, and I do like the, uh, uh, the government subsidizing some parts of the investment, at least as an investor, I like that idea. Uh, but I also believe that you have some of the uh, same problems about very long holding periods in that space. Uh, by the way, biotech, that's always been the issue of biotech as well, is it can take 10 years before you really know if you have a winner. And uh, money is not as patient as it used to be. You know, VCs do not have the luxury of time like we used to. It used to be that, you know, uh, your limited partners would say to you, I understand that the most recent fund you've just invested in and fully invested in, we won't see liquidity in that for three or four years. And we're okay with that. And in the meantime, we'll let you raise another fund and uh, give you money. And then hopefully, you know, by the time that one is fully committed, the first fund is starting to show some returns. Uh, uh, the, you know, money isn't as patient, and part of that is because you have uh, the public pension funds and, of course, a lot of wealthy individuals who are underwater. They don't have the money. They need the liquidity now. And waiting four or five years for some cash is just not something they're interested in, uh, which to me means that it's, it's harder to raise money for the biotech funds, but if you can, like anything else, if competition is limited because others can't, you could be in a great spot. I, I think we're engineering meets chemistry, is what I'm talking about, just mm -hmm. to, that as a future opportunity. Do you see structural change in the industry itself coming? For the yeah, I was gonna, industry? Yeah, oh, yeah, I was going to, let's talk a little bit about that. So structural changes. We, we kind of went through, VCs are declining right now, returns are lower, uh, there hasn't been the big mega new thing like the internet or software or uh, for the enterprise. Cloud computing. Yeah, I mean, is that, who knows if that's big enough. Uh, uh, how, how, what do you think about? Well, it's, a, it's been a tough 10 years, as you said. It's a lousy 10 years as a general rule, you know. So everybody, I don't say everybody, a lot of people think VC is a glamorous job, you know. A lot of people like to leave school and get a VC job. I'm like, when guys come and talk to me, like, why? <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah. So you have Sarbanes-Oxley has a huge impact on the ability to take a company public. That's kind of been thrown under the rug now. You know, people the, the cost the cost of Sarbanes-Oxley is enormous to a business and regulatory and things like that. It's, so that's a big problem. We need liquidity so we can re-channel the liquidity and give our limited liquidity, and everybody gives you more money, and the cycle continues. So that's to me is an enormous problem that. It's a big problem, and, and, and it's sort of now 2004, so it's older now, but it's, it was a huge problem. We're getting no help from any government uh, besides being in you know, alternative energy, which is wonderful if you guys are in it. You go to the government all day, 
but we're not. Um, so we're not getting any help from the government. The government's not making it easier for, for small businesses to do anything right now. There's more regulation. I think that's a big problem. They didn't get the carried interest now. They might not get it because they're going to, you know, the, I'm talking about Democrats are going to lose probably a lot of seats right now. So maybe we get we sneak by for a few years on that. But that's that's a big situation. I don't know if you know about that. I mean, we basically go from ordinary income. Yeah. We go from you know capital gains to ordinary income. So it's a swing of. 20, 20 plus points to uh, a guy in, on a federal basis, and you know, I don't know what will happen at the end of the day with our state. But probably, let's say it's 23 points at the end of the day. Huge, huge swing. We'll have to change the way we're structured, I think, as a result of that. So, right there, big change that's just kind of hanging over a cloud right now in the venture capital. Side. Do you think, uh, sort of, how we see the world today, where you have Silicon Valley, sort of Route 128, Boston, and then you know, yeah, a little bit in D.C., some in Austin, some here. Uh, you know, five years forward, right, just, just random guessing. Same structure, more or fewer firms. Wait, um, VC firms? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think fewer VC firms unless they change the regulatory. I think it, it's just kind of wearing it down. You know, returns, people need to make money. If the VCs don't make money, they're going to ultimately pull their money. I mean, there's plenty of... On the pension side, the, you know, alternative investments, it's called, which is where VC sits, is smaller and smaller piece of the pie right now. Every, every year getting smaller. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if I answered your question fully. I think smaller firms, I think Southern California, you know, we should have more firms. It's, you know, it's not a zero-sum game for, for us. We should have more more firms. We lost firms in the, the last this last three years. We probably... I don't know, in half. Probably in half. In half. You know, probably, why, why of do you, the investing firms. Why do you think Southern California has such so many fewer venture firms? I think because uh, an entrepreneur can go to the Bay Area first and foremost if, if they want to. You know, the Bay Area is the you know the, the mecca of venture capital. You know, so you can go you can go there. I think that's the biggest reason. So and you and it's hard. It's been hard for the firms like ours to 